Welcome back to Mama with the Good Hair. I am your host, Jessica, and I'm so happy to have you here and joining me in my series, Back to Blonde Hair. Last time, I shared some personal stories about why I want to become blonde again, and this time we're going to talk about how I choose what color blonde to go for and what I do at the actual salon visit. Let's start four or five years ago. I was newly graduated, new job, big girl job. I moved out to Hawaii where I didn't know anybody. I was working a really high stress job. I was working construction. And if you're working construction in most states, you get an on season and an off season. The off season is when it's really cold and too much snow on the ground to do anything. But as you can imagine in Hawaii, it's just year round since it's the same temperature the entire year. So when you're working construction in Hawaii, you get double the experience because you're working twice as much as anybody else in construction, which is great, but it does start to take its toll. I was taking on a lot of responsibility very young, very early in my career, like I said, more than a lot of my peers, but I was working 80-hour weeks, very stressful job, and like I said, double the time that everybody else was. I'm not going to get into all the details of my job because it gets very technical, but it was a lot of risk, it was a lot of money, and it was a lot of responsibility, and it was taking a toll on my whole body, and my hair was really the first thing to start to rebel that I could notice. I was outside all day. Hawaii is so hot, so humid. The air is so salty. My hair was filled with all of that, plus blood, sweat, and tears, literally. I would get home. I would be so exhausted from working a 12-plus hour day. I would get in the shower, try to wash through the tangled, matted mess that was my hair, try to like halfway brush it through and then I just would get so tired that I would just put it up in a messy bun and do it all again the next day, go straight to work. I was just too tired to even deal with it. I literally have so many pictures of me where my hair is in that tangled messy bun and it's hidden underneath my hard hat and only I knew what was really going on up there. So I realized I needed to do something. I had enough. I made a hair appointment to try to deal with this crazy mess that was going on. I figured they could lighten up my roots, cut off some ends, make it a little bit more manageable. I booked the very last appointment that they had for the day that they could still fit me in and get a full highlight and cut. I had to take off of work early at 6 p.m., which, yes, that was early for me. I walked into the appointment. I didn't have time to go home, so I walked in literally with my asphalt-covered high-vis vest on, my dirty steel toe boots, my sunglass tan from safety glasses, and just smelling like sewage, literally, because I was working in a sewer line. I was so embarrassed to even walk into the salon that way, but I knew I needed to. I was covered in concrete. I sat down in the chair, showed my hairstylist the picture of what I wanted, and she told me that there was no way she could do it in the time that I reserved, even though... I had told them I wanted a full highlight and a cut, and they reserved that three hours or whatever it was. When she told me that, I just broke down in tears. It was a lot of things. It was the stress of the job. It was my hair taking its toll, and it just felt like this was the last opportunity I had to really fix something to kind of build my confidence back up, and I was being told it wasn't possible. There was no way I could make another appointment and convince my boss to let me leave early again the salon wasn't open on the one day a week that I had off. It just felt like such a dead end. It felt like my little bit of hope that I had that I could fix my hair was just completely gone. So I left the salon in tears, didn't schedule another appointment, and I went home and did a bunch of research, and that was such a pivotal moment in my hair journey and why I do what I do. My hair was and still is a huge part of my identity, and there's a few times in my life that I can pinpoint where it really made such a big difference and kind of like tweaked my confidence. Last week, I talked about becoming a mom and mom identity and all the hair stuff with that, and this was the other time when I literally was crying in the hair salon because I felt like it was at such a dead end. Even to this day, every single time I walk into a hair salon, I get that little like ting of anxiety 
come up just because of that one experience. So now my goal is just to make sure nobody else ever feels like that if I can help it. I want everybody to have only happy tears when you go into the salon, not feel like you have lost hope in having good hair and everyone deserves to be blonde if they want to be blonde. Last week, I also told you about every kind of blonde hair I've ever had from the purple blonde to the pink blonde to the gray blonde to everything. So here is my process on how I decide what kind of blonde I want to be and what I take into the salon with me to make sure I'm getting those results that I want. So first thing I do is I get on Pinterest. I just pin every blonde hair photo that I like. It doesn't have to have a rhyme or a reason. If it looks good, if I like it, I just pin it to a new board. I do this for like a week before my hair appointment. So I'm pinning everything from blonde hair where it's like kind of brunette blonde all the way up to platinum blonde and everything in between. Then once I've been doing that for like a week, I'll go into that board and I'll start to like see what the patterns are. If I notice I've got so many platinum blonde and only a few low lights, that means I'm feeling kind of in a platinum blonde era. I notice sometimes this changes like with the seasons, if I'm feeling something a little bit more fall versus like summertime hair, this could change with the trends or just how I'm feeling. A lot of times I like a more natural balayage. Sometimes I go for the more platinum highlights. So whatever I see most of are the winners. That's what I'm gonna go towards and I delete out all the rest of them. Then when I go to the salon, this is key, I show my hairdresser my entire Pinterest board and I say, this is the vibe I'm looking for. This is the mood board. This is the vision board. This is what I want. Because I've had those moments where I show them just one photo and they see something in that photo that I'm not seeing and I'm not getting the results that I want. Maybe it's they saw some low lights, but really I just like the cut and the way it looked on the model on Pinterest. So when I show them an entire mood board, they can get the whole vibe of what I'm trying to go for and kind of tweak and adjust it to fit what I'm looking for. So this time I'm going more of a balayage kind of natural look. I still want something that's pretty low maintenance without being too brunette. So I like that kind of grown out look and the fact that I can wait between salon appointments longer if I need to because of my daughter. It's still low maintenance enough for me with my busy mom life but it's getting me to that blonde of where I want to be at. So I am going to show her my balayage mood board and we will see what we get. Thank you so much for joining me on my series all about going back to blonde. I hope you found this so helpful in preparing you on your salon visits, creating some inspiration. And next week, I'm going to be sharing all the tips and tricks on how to maintain blonde hair once you get home and post salon. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any episodes. And if you would leave a review, if you love this, I would absolutely love to read that. And thank you so much for all your support. We will see you next week.